My name is Wolfgang Stremmel. I'm the head of the Department of Gastroenterology at the University Hospital here in Heidelberg. And I would like to introduce you to a paper of us where we describe treatment effects in Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease is a copper overdose disease. It has a prevalence of 1 in 30,000 in Western populations. It is a copper overload disease which manifests at the liver and at the brain level. In the liver it causes liver injury with a clinical manifestation uh, ranging from fulminant hepatic failure to chronic hepatic failure as we see it in cirrhosis. The movement disorder is a manifestation of the neurological manifestation of the disease. The disease affects children, young adults, and it has normally, without any treatment, a bad prognosis. Survival after diagnosis in patients with liver manifestation of the disease is very poor. However, there is no causative therapy available. The only therapy which we can offer to the patients is a symptomatic treatment to relieve them from their copper burden. We want to achieve a negative copper balance. Now we have two options to achieve that. First, we use chelators, copper chelators. They were introduced by Dr. Walsh in the 50s and 60s. It's first D-penicillamine, which is very effective but has some side effects. For example, autoimmunity, like nephritis and polyneuropathy. And the second is triantine, which is, is a little bit less effective, but doesn't show that many side effects. Only anemia has been observed so far. And the second option is the introduction of oral zinc preparation. This was introduced into medicine by Dr. Hohenrad from Berlin. Zinc induces in the mucosa the accumulation of copper binding proteins, thus the absorption into the organism is impaired. This is not a very effective therapy, but it has no side effects, despite dyspepsia. Now, there are believers who either employ zinc or chelators, but there is no direct head-to-head -head comparison of both treatment options. And this was the aim of the present study, to objectively assess the efficacy of both different treatment options in Wilson disease. In a retrospectively organized study, in a large cohort of Wilson disease patients from Germany and Austria. In total, we had 288 patients and we did the study in cooperation with Professor Ferenczi from Vienna. Our main outcome parameter was treatment failure. We studied three groups. First, patients with chelator therapy. Second, patients with chelator as well as zinc, so a combination therapy, and thirdly, patients on zinc alone. And treatment failure was defined as elevation of liver enzymes, twice the upper limit of normal, by GGT, AST, and ALT. And as well, the parameter of parameters of copper metabolism, whether we could achieve a balanced copper metabolism or whether, and this was treatment failure, increased copper excretion in urine, that means a positive uh, copper balance. Now, in this picture it is shown patients on chelator on a or on a combination therapy, chelator and zinc, they do very well. They don't show or almost don't show treatment failures. In contrast, patients on zinc alone showed 
treatment failures in about 40%. What are the implications? 40% of the patients treated with things constitute a subgroup which does not very well respond to treatment and they are considered as treatment failures. We don't know why this happens, but those patients on zinc have to be monitored closely in regard to liver enzymes like GGT, AST and ASL and as well as in regard to copper metabolism. And second, they have to be moved to chelators because the chelators help and bring them back to a complete response. And indeed, our patients all responded when they were reintroduced to chelator therapy. Now, the conclusion of our trial is now that we have three treatment options available for Wilson's disease patients. They all work and they can, they can be provided to the patient on an individual basis. Second, chelators are very effective in regard to treatment efficacy. However, adverse events may occur and they have to be watched for. This includes nephropathy and polyneuropathy. Three, zinc is effective in a large subgroup of patients, in, most, in almost 60% of the patients. However, there can be treatment failures which have to be observed and then we have the option to move back to chelators. Zinc has no significant side effects besides dyspepsia. Thank you for your attention.